From the turn of the 19th century to today's modern era, film has grown and developed from being a sideshow spectacle of technological advancement to being an integrated part of everyday life. Both the way in which we view films and the content in the films themselves has radically changed, spanning from watching a train arrive at a station on the big screen to CGI Latin films about comic book heroes. The core of the medium has not changed throughout film's entire history. The fact that it is, in essence, a passive medium. For over 100 years, people have been watching films and nothing more. There have been forays into the idea of interacting with the narrative of a film, but at the base of it all, the films that have endured are the ones in which a viewer sits in a seat and passively views the same narrative over and over again. No matter how they react or how many times they watch it, today people still passively watch films. A way of viewing that seemed would never change. However, the recent boom of popularity with video games and the consideration of them as a legitimate art form has raised a crucial question that begs answering. Are these two mediums as separate as they seem or can they be merged? Hi, my name is Arthur Maris. I'm one of the organizers for the Toronto Independent Game Jam, or TO Jam for short, which is a, a three-day game-making binge um, where hundreds of game developers from Toronto, Canada, US, and even Europe uh, come together to make games. When you're watching someone play a game or experience a game, um, in, in comparison to when you're, when you're watching a movie, I feel like with, with games, the unique part of it is being able to watch another, another person's choices or actions and see sort of how they play the game. Um, much like with a movie, you're just sort of watching a story unfold or you're you're sort of you're sort of eased into being told about a particular theme or a particular um, idea, but, but again, but with games, um, since the possibilities are a lot uh, are endless, I guess with with games in terms of what you can do with them, watching someone play them or watching yourself play them and make those decisions while you play, I think gives um, a totally different. Um, Experience. By definition, the merging of these two art forms is oxymoronic, as one of them is passive and the other is interactive. In video games, a passive viewer suddenly becomes the active player. The act of sitting and watching becomes participating and interacting with the world and the narrative. Author Mark J. P. Wolf contends that part of what makes a game a video game is the element of interaction. The player often experiences with a central processing unit, or CPU opponent, who is controlled by the computer or game console. This insinuates that, inherently, a video game has an element of interaction for the player. However, a video game does not simply become an interactive film. At its core, film is essentially a passive medium and video games an interactive medium. Due to this interactive nature, no two players experience a single video game in the same way, whether it is the story that changes for each player or simply how they go about finishing a level or solving a puzzle. There is no right or wrong way to play a game, and it is this interactive aspect that is so crucial to making the medium of video games so unique and different to films. So the one thing I, that, that I believe that the games can do um, to, break down, to break down those barriers is that I, I believe games can bring, bring the, the viewer, or I guess in, game, in this case the um, person playing uh, the games right into the experience, while with films um, you're, kind of, you're just sort of the, sort of the, the bystander, um, sort of watching how, how events unfold. But with games, you can, you can see things from various different perspectives um, as you play different characters. And, and I think the way that the games are going right now in terms of uh, independent games or, or AAA games, um, a wide variety of different uh, communities, uh, environments, um, beliefs, and, and, and overall uh, visions can, can be told in, 
in, in a wide variety of, of either real or, or fantasy stories, uh, which is something I think that, that film uh, has a little, bit of, a little bit of trouble doing right now. It's true. Yeah, it's true that um, in the film your attention is very much led uh, in order to serve the purpose of the narrative, and that's you know that, that's a lot of the task of editing and, and cinematography, you know, leading your attention in a in a in a in a smooth and continuous way, uh, unless you know a jarring effect is desired. But you know, but generally speaking, um, in uh, VR this is not going to be the case because you can look wherever you want. Uh, but this is not new. I mean, this is the same in games. In games, there's the flexibility to to look in any direction, more or less. Um, there's the flexibility to wander off um, away from the map. Um, a lot of games uh, are a lot less free than they appear, so they'll they'll restrict you to moving uh, very specific paths. Um, just like the the choices that you can make in, in many games are actually very limited. Um, you know, if you if you mapped out the decision tree, it's pretty simple. And it's not that different from a linear plot. Um, but the games are more open-ended, you know, more open-world sandbox type games. It's in in um, in either case, there's still behind it all. There's some kind of narrative logic in the game, uh, which maybe has to respond a little bit to how you're working, or maybe has to put things in the world that are going to kind of guide you back into the path. Right? Hopefully not strong barriers, sometimes it's barriers, but uh, sometimes it's as simple as there's a flashing thing over there, you know, and there's nothing interesting over here, so I'm going to go that way. Um, there's little markers, there's guides, there's things that will seduce you to look in a certain way, which is not really that much different to the layout of the frame and seducing you to look in the right place, or priming the frame of the shot before with some object in the place where you're going to be look, looking, right? So. It's, it's the same underlying logic, it's a different mechanic. Um, in the more open world games, then you need to have uh, the game, the, the engine itself needs to be more intelligent in placing those things because you have more freedom, so it has to fill in the gaps around your freedom. If you wander off in the wrong direction, then it better start putting some interesting content in that direction, uh, otherwise, you're going to think that the game is. In a book entitled Virtual Interaction, Interaction of Virtual Inhabited 3D Worlds, author Soren Kohlstrup defines interactivity as a measure of the medium's potential ability to let the users influence the form and or contents of the mediated information. Video games, being interactive, should then be able to be influenced by the player. Kohlstrup goes on to say, according to the narrative theories, the withholding of information is crucial for the creation of suspense and drive. If the user knows too much, suspense and drive may leave the story. He says that to overcome this, the computer should be able to resist the user. There is an interplay here between the narrative shaping to the player's actions and something more familiar to film. The narrative withholding information from the player. Kohlstrup articulates then, interactivity, the heart of video games, makes each game unique and different for each player because they are influencing the narrative not the other way around as in cinema. However, clearly video games borrow from film, so the same processor that is allowing for, inter for interactivity must also retain some power and control to create a cinematic-like narrative. This is primarily done in video games through a use of exploration. A player will be presented with a virtual world and information regarding the narrative, usually accompanied by cutscenes similar to film. However, rarely does the game ever tell the player everything and it is up to us, the player, to complete the mission and advance through levels or stages to uncover more of the narrative. A game withholds part of the narrative and will not present it to the player until they actively interact with the narrative and the diegetic world to uncover more of the narrative and eventually reach a conclusion to the story. This trend of exploration is indicative to sandbox games such as Elder Scrolls or Grand Theft Auto in which the player is put in a massive open world where they can almost literally do anything. They can either advance the narrative if they wish, or they can walk through the streets, stop off at a bar, drink, or, you know, simply do no objectives at all. No two players will uncover the narrative in the same way, or even the exact same time frame, 
Unlike a film, the player is in charge of the narrative pace, instead of being passive as a viewer is. However, there is still narrative pacing in the traditional sense of a narrative structure or story arc, and so the game will employ signposts or cues to guide the player in the correct direction in order to advance the plot. Simulator, walking simulators, and, um, cooking simulators, and, you know, whatever it is. But um, it's more. Um, I, I see in games, um, in, in 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 the game world, a little bit of a uh, kind of running out of steam. Basically, there's a there's a running out of steam of, of the the ideas that serve the game industry so well for the last decade or more. Uh, we're finally getting tired of that thing. <laughs> Um, and so now it's like, oh, what do we do? What fills that gap? What, what makes people excited? Um, I think it's a mistake to just jump in and, and say, oh, VR is the thing that's going to fill that gap. And that's what a lot of people are doing. But it's not taking seriously what, what games are and what, it's not taking seriously what VR is. Um, VR is a future of games, it's a future of films, it's a future of interactive art. A future of each one of those. Um, and it's not only the future of one, each one of those. Um, what we can experience um, in, a, in a VR space um, is very different from what we could experience in film. It's very different from what we could experience in game. Uh, it's interesting seeing what things people have found that work well and don't work well in that space. So, like, um, you know. Uh, because, because it came, a lot of the impetus came from the game industry, a lot of people were like, okay, let's start with the first person shooter. Um, you know, obviously we want to do, you know, we want to be in that space, running around the corridors and killing the zombies, whatever. Um, actually, that's a really unpleasant experience in VR. Um, for one thing, moving at that speed is very difficult. Uh, for um, another thing, moving in general is an unsolved problem for VR. Um, it's because you're... You're not moving, your mm -hmm. joystick is moving, um, but you get this strong impression of passing through space. Uh, things that feel uh, acceptably fast in, in uh, ordinary games or films in VR are un unbearably fast. They're too fast, they're, they're, they're disorienting. This may be something which will pass, right? It may be that we're not used to um, experiencing VR yet, and so. Um, and in the same way, things like Job Simulator are like, well, once you get used to VR, then maybe Job Simulator is not going to feel that amazing anymore. <laughs> no. um, I guess it probably won't. Um, but we, we haven't found out the things that, uh, that, really, uh, that, that, that really do engage. But I, I'm sure that it, <clears throat> it involves uh, interactivity. I'm sure that it involves using our hands. I'm sure that it involves um, using our sense of space around us. You know, things. Um, there are all kinds of senses of space. There's 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 vertigo. There's uh, the feeling, the the uncomfortable feeling when somebody's too close to you. There's whether uh, an object on the table is within your reach or not. These are really primal experiences of space that we have and that we haven't ever been able to deal with through media before. Clearly video games draw from film, and especially in recent gaming trends, are heavily influenced both narratively and aesthetically by film. Much like film would have, would have been influenced by photography, it is pertinent then to establish then the recent trend in ga video games for a more narratively heavy experience. One of the first home video game consoles, and perhaps the most famous early home consoles, the Atari 2600, was all about user interaction. Its games included Pitfall, Space Invaders, and Asteroids, had no narrative whatsoever. The most famous of these games, Pitfall, revolved around a character jumping over pits with an in-game character or sprite. There was no narrative or character development, it was simply much like an early film, a spectacle to behold. As the technology has developed, however, video games have evolved as both a medium and an art form, more and more games now heavily rely on narrative over gameplay or user interaction. Hideo Kojiyama's Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid Guns of the Patriot. The game in total takes an average 18 hours to beat with approximately 8 hours, 8 of those hours consisting of cutscenes. The game currently holds the record for the longest cutscene in a video game. 
clocking in at 27 minutes, almost half of the game. Then it is essentially a film in which the viewer is passive, watching a narrative unfold in front of them. With the development of video game technology, however, not all games have followed this passive narrative trend. Some games have taken the opposite direction, opting to the narratives that adapt to the player and shaping themselves based on how the player interacts with the diegetic world of the film. Notably, games of this variety come from the software company BioWare, including, but not limited to, their very famous Mass Effect trilogy. These games employ a novel idea of having the narrative change based on what the player chooses to do or say with their in-game character, Commander Shepard. This system spans not only one game, but all three. Therefore, a seemingly simple decision made in the first game could carry over into the second and third game, altering how characters interact with the player and, in some cases, what takes place in the narrative arc of the trilogy. However, even within the games which revolve around the player choice and interaction, the narratives, the narratives in recent years have gone much more complex and nuanced. They become more akin to a film narrative than early video game narratives. Now players are faced with morally ambiguous and ethically challenging narratives in which they have to make difficult decisions. Both of these mediums can exist within the realm of VR. It is highly probable that they can blend into a new medium. VR presents an opportunity never before seen in either cinema or video games. Many may criticize it and even fathoming to have a film or any other work related to film be entirely digital production. However, as Lev Manovich theorizes in his discussion of redefining cinema in the digital age and connecting current digital media back to film's roots in animation, the mutability of digital data impairs the value of cinema recording as documents of reality. 20th century's regime of virtual reality, the result of automatically recording visual reality was only an exception, an isolate accident in the history of virtual visual representation, which has evolved and now again involves the manual construction of images. If this is true, the cinema has always relied on the manual altering images from its outset. Then suddenly bringing cinema and cinematic elements into the sphere of a manually constructed virtual reality does not seem far off from cinema's roots. Merging cinema with video games to create a new passive game or active film in the realm of virtual reality then is simply an extension of what film truly is. Mutable images ready to be re rearranged and adjusted by the hand of man and the experienced in any way or another. It is clear that video games have been moving towards more cinematic experiences and narrative styles in recent years, opting to give the player more free re reign in an open world. However, these games can never be truly free and open as the narrative of the, of the game will tr always nudge the player in a direction through vicarious cues and signposts. A second problem will always remain in the, that the player and in-game character engaging with the world of the game, and it can never therefore truly merge with the passive medium of film. However, with a true virtual reality space, all preconceived notions of narrative structure or ideas of the passive slash active disappear, and suddenly the player is now controlling the cinematic camera. They become the director, creating their own shots and compositions, taking an interactive role in a very cinematic-like space. It is unknown whether these narratives will be more akin to games or films, whether or not they will revolve around interactivity, or whether they will be any narratives at all. What is certain, though, is that VR is a space in which both cinema and video games can coexist within the same sphere, and be approached in similar ways, in that video games and film can finally combine in order to create a completely new medium of the interactive film or passive game.